Like that's what their team is built around. So they want to play aggressive and Alliance are playing pretty much what they're best at. So. Yeah. And Lotus heroes generally ends up to be greedy. Uh, I think his least greedy hero is generally Marana, which is already selected here by MYM. So I'm curious what Lotus is going to be playing. A PA or something, maybe? Tusk. I met, I met Tusk. I want to see it. I'm not sure if it's going to be good in this lineup. Did Probably. they play with Tree and Io? Yeah, they? yeah, it's kind of different. So never mm. mind. We'll see what he's going to bring out. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering the same thing. And. Honestly, MYM, unless they're going to be going aggressive and picking maybe a 1v1 here on sending the Murata Bane Visage top, uh, we could be seeing potentially another core from them too. That's what I'm expecting, I think. I think yeah. this is a good offensive trialing. Not like the abandoned CM thing that we saw earlier where there was really no kill potential. This one, you Bane, Nightmare, you Arrow, and then you Visage for cleanup. The coding is here for Rubik. It's very important for him to kind of uh, de-toggle that sleep whenever possible, especially if they're going to go on Loda. I think Weaver would be a great pickup here just to survive that lane, but that also falls into the problem of... Weaver loses 1v1 to Lone Druid, though, because of the pool in centuries. No, 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 no. Weaver for Alliance. Oh, for Alliance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the problem is it's also a very greedy pickup. It doesn't scale in too much, much later. Yeah. I think that would be actually almost too greedy, even yeah. for Alliance, because... Wow. Okay. okay. So they, Weaver. they picked Alliance it. So you were saying it's a counter. Uh, Lone Druid counters Weaver because if you, of the pool. Yeah. If you get pooled centuries, I think Lone Druid beats Weaver. It's still cl it's close, right? But the thing is, is Weaver in that matchup, you almost have to spam Shikuchi because any good Lone Druid's constantly going to have the bear on you. Mm -hmm. And since Weaver's attack range isn't really that high, he has to get really close to the creep wave to hit the creeps. So you're going to be taking a lot of damage, Ooh. which is why I just don't. don't oh, no. I don't. That's why. Yeah, it's. He's actually played this hero quite a few times in the past. So, I'm. What's the plan here? We just get the Chen level like three or four, and then push down the towers top. Well, they'll always have the potential to push at any stage in the game because they have a lone druid and nether blast destroys buildings Prepare pretty darn fast. Battle. So I don't think they're really pressured to do anything early. He's going to relax and fight. Yeah, I, I think this is just very typical alliance. They can defend towers very well with their lineup. And as soon as they get any kind of advantage in the game, they can very easily turn that into towers for themselves. I'm just worried about their laning stage. It seems like the offensive trial lane, well, they're five man scouting into top jungle, but if there is an offensive trial lane from MYM, how is Alliance going to deal with that? Sure, they have two 600 range hero, but they were both so squishy. You nightmare arrow and, and they're just practically dead. Got a ring of protection for Stadium and Pugna. All right, there we go. That ring of protection is going to keep Lotus safe. Do you think that, like, they want to build the Basilius just so they can push fast? Is that the idea behind that? I, I imagine so. Normally, it comes from a Chen who is going to have a little bit more access into gold, but obviously Pugna uses that uh, ring of Basilius just as well. We'll see. I, I like that. Did they uh, scout well, Roche? Yeah, they, you got to scout <laughs> Roche, but you got to give him give the credit. But unfortunately, Pug has to go all the way back to base now. Ooh, exists if you look at his item build. He's got Blaze of Attack first, which is actually quite questionable. Doesn't no talisman just give you plus nine damage and then the stats? Yep. So. But if he's going Blade of Attack, then he has to be going the Phase Boots. Begins. And also, I just wanted to point out really quick that Minnie's got the, the Heart TV6 thing. Is, and I want to make sure I heard this right because production were talking to me, but it was quite low. But I think they mentioned that they were the ones who actually sent him to TI3. No. Oh. I think that's what he said, and if if that's the case, and that's very cool of them, so just showing his support. But cool. phase boots, puck man, it's legit. I'm sure it is, but uh, no tal. Well, I guess yeah. If you know, this allows you to skip the no talisman, so there's an argument for that. But yeah, it's gonna be S4 mid. The first three orbs is gonna be Quas. That's a little bit surprising. Just putting yourself in this kind of a position, look at the discrepancy in base damage between these two heroes. Puck is 53 with one branch, and S4 on the Invoker, he's 41, and he has two more branches than Exist does on his Puck. So that just goes to show how much more difficult it is for the Invoker to really try to do any last hitting of the sort against this particular hero. But at the same time, MYM with the aggressive lane, they should, by all means, have an advantage here. And I'm getting a bit of lag. I hope the players aren't, because I got some really Audio weird lag. Yeah. It's uh, pretty tearing. good on my side, so it's yeah. maybe just you. <laughs> yeah, actually, it seems like S4 is just abusing the block a little bit better, using the hill a little bit better. He's, uh, well, putting it the harass on Exist. There is no face just yet. And look at the damage he's dealing out. He was able to get level 2 before Exist gets his. And wow, forces out a salve. So despite the damage to uh, Prince, it looks like S4 is manhandling Exist so far.
It's the difference between being able to double wave somebody as mid under the first tower and be able to get that kind of a CS and level advantage early yeah. because it's way more difficult to deal with somebody under the tower because you're constantly going for the last hit because you don't want to miss them. And wow, S4 oh, is actually getting quite wow. low. Get the first blood, yeah, right? He's gonna die. Wow. No. Okay. Very uncharacteristic. Maybe he thought Ake was a little bit closer than he was. Well, we're gonna see a Hadouken cooldown in about a couple seconds. Exis already using the oh, phase and looks nice. like Ken's gonna clean up, but still a huge victory on the mid lane. I did not get the chance to see what a puck bought his item. He had a bottle as well. Or maybe yeah, he, he just picked that up in the well. Yeah, just yeah okay. top lane looks like MYM's gonna be able to secure themselves a Pugna kill, so Loda drops as well. Two to one in favor of MYM, and not only that, but Man, that's where was crazy over aggressive there. I'm actually quite a bit surprised that he got caught like that. Well, I think it was, you know, the chance saying, hey, I'm coming in, just keep him there, keep him low, bait out a couple of spells, but as for perhaps a bit, did a little bit too much and paid as a result. And you can see Chen is just kind of uh, he wants waiting. Blood. This is a very, very kind of uh, aggressive gank because you have to bait out both face and orb. Well, orb's already baited out, and this is go time here for S4. Uh, he walked very correctly. Yeah. Though. I mean, he expects it. Exist does. So, I'm I'm happy because I've exist on my fantasy team. Go exist. I have minion. How many points is first blood? Uh, I don't is it like a it, does, it doesn't have a category okay, unfortunately, okay. but he he got a kill, so it's good. Kills are points, man. Yeah. And the important thing too to note is that actually Weaver, as of right now, Ace is doing a pretty good job. He's 15 and 0. Bulldog's not far behind him by any stretch, but he also didn't get centuries, which I thought was a little bit surprising, especially when you have a Chen on your team. You figure typically if you have a Chen, that's the one hero in the game who can actually not start with any items yes. at all yes. and buy all the support items. And I think that Ad Admiral Bulldog is actually suffering because of this. Yeah, maybe he's gonna have a pair of sentry being sent to him once the bear is uh, sufficiently gonna start rooting, uh, which is gonna be a level. The top lane, yeah, they're gonna go right here on Mini Mini. Gonna get wow. blown up. That damage. Crazy so, Five level two fade bolt with another blast and a test of faith. Granted, the test of faith isn't. Damage, yeah, it's yeah. pure damage, but still. That's a very, very high damage output, and it didn't look like it was expected on the side of MYM because they kind of were a bit hesitant to decide if they wanted to commit to the fight or not, but he actually died crazy fast. Yeah, I think a lot of people would really underestimate what Chen can do early game to see, oh, the creeps are running in, but Tess of Fate paired damage, if you land the uh, uh, the dices on that one, it, it hurts really, really badly. Jared, the bugs against uh, Lone Druid, actually. You know, when you when you split push them with Radiance on the bear, if you put the bugs on them, they can never go home, and they just constantly eat away at it. I see. I was playing long during the game day against Weaver. It was awful. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you want to recall your bear and you're just like, I can't, I can't, I can't, and then the bear dies, and then they last forever as well. I never yeah. knew how long they last. It's ridiculous. He's got the pretty typical build going though. The one three one when you're level five on a Weaver. I think this is pretty much what everyone does. Well, yeah, but if you buy a bottle in the safe lane, his mid doesn't necessarily need it because he's kind of had full rune control, at least up until this point. He got the DD when the four, uh, or I think it was maybe the two-minute rune when he had the DD. Maybe it was the four. I wasn't actually quite paying attention to which one it was. But either way, an evoker doesn't go for runes anyway. Yeah. So he can bottle crow. And speaking of, uh, you were talking about the lack of central war for Admiral Bulldog on the bot lane. He did actually get an observer ward, and that observer ward is scouting out the gank coming up from crit. So Chen is making that rotation, and I think they could actually come in and kill crit. So the hunter is about to get hunted. I think Chen maybe. Oh, he's gonna clear out this camp. I think Furbog or Hellbear Smasher, as he's called, it's probably one of the best early Tomato, game the ganking game. creep you want. And I think crit is yeah. Uh, they see crit. Where's the clap? Okay, Bear's not following it. Yeah, he's he's got to get an entangle and committing to that fight and hoping for an entangle is a bit optimistic, I would say, even for Admiral Bulldog. Yeah, Admiral it. Bulldog first hit entangle all the time, so you just count on it. And it's, it's laggy, isn't it? Yeah, is it laggy uh, it, mine is mine's lagging really bad, but yours is, is fine. Yeah. So I'm so, just gonna let you do team fights because I, I, I get I'm some lag. I'm gonna shoot you a quick question here. Is uh, normally we see Puck Max's illusory orb. He's actually gonna go for waning rift. Now they both do the same damage. Is there any reason why he you want to do that specifically against Invoker? Because if you go and you try to gank Invoker, and he has time to cast anything, even if he's coiled, like say for instance you coil Orban, right, and you're like 4-1-1, which is pretty much the standard, he can actually Tornado and maybe get a Ghost Walk off, you know, and live. But if you have Max Silence, he can. And here's the counter engage on mini top lane. The Decrepify Nether Blast doing a ton of damage, but Unicorn's going to be able to keep EGM and Loda at bay with some auto attacks. So I do think that the Max Silence fits pretty well here. It's actually more damage for mana as well. 
Well, yeah, it's more damage for mana. It's a longer cooldown, so it's not as good in lane to be able to utilize to harass against, but you don't really want to go harass against a Quas Wex Invoker anyway, right? Like, you just want to go straight in, all in for the kill. And I think in light of that, it's a good choice. Yeah. One weakness of uh, taking more points into Rainy Riff is that your shove, as, uh, sh as you <laughs> recall, right, right, is not man. as good. <laughs> and, uh, well, it looks like a little bit more engagement off on top. They punted, just got another kill on Mini. He's going to get sent back here, but no, Loda get, or excuse me, Rubik gets picked off. So, not exactly... Uh, well, I guess it's an like okay trade, but uh, Loda getting the experience end of that is, is better. But yeah, back to the Luge Orb on the mid lane. You can't push this wall, so the, the runes, the rune control is not going to be as good. But like, you know, Drasko pointed out earlier, it's not like S4 is going to be going for the rune, so it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, oh, bottom lane, Ace wants to go pretty aggressive here on Admiral Bulldog. He's going to get immediate TP reaction by EGM. It looks like Ace is actually going to be forced back here. Do you have any regen for him? Nope. I think he might actually just have to go back to base, which is a bit of a bummer, to be honest. Especially since Ace is just doing whatever he wants. Oh. He's going to Shikuchi under the tower. Oh. EGM's here, though. He was oh. sitting in fog. He's going to get the lift. Okay. Admiral Bulldog going into pair <laughs> And he gets a root. Holy root gaming, Batman. Ace, though, he's Ooh. got his time lapse. He's going to be just fine. I mean, it, that looked close, but for, for Ace's perspective, it's like, you know, he it was a calculated dive. He had Well, it was close available. for Bulldog not dying. Yeah. That's basically what the, what the hype was for, because Ace should have died there under any circumstance. Yeah. But just the fact that Admiral Bulldog can just so he just sits there confidently going, I'm gonna get this route. Yeah. And he gets it. Well he also know that he's gonna dodge one attack with his shape shift. Yeah. Which is, you know, who who doesn't even, who does that? I guess Admiral Bulldog does. Hey man, when you've played the hero that many times, you just you know. know. And only that hero that many times because He's Admiral got like Bulldog. four or five heroes yeah, now. Right. Come on. Fair enough. You can't say his profit's not good. No, his profit's really good. He's really clockwork good. as well and bounty. Yeah. His bounty's really good, yeah. What else does he have? That's that's pretty much it. <laughs> huh. He's got a timber. Oh, I don't, I don't oh, think Viper. his timber I've seen was him play Viper before. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't remember seeing him play Viper. Alright, bottling here. Looks like Ace is gonna go right here on EGM. EGM, whoa! He's gonna try to survive that. He does have a lift. He's gonna toss it right oh. to S4, but a little bit hopeful on that one. They haven't bought Sentry. I think he just CP to ensure that he wouldn't die. That's yeah. the only reason I can see S4 doing that, because there's no way you're killing him, even with a cold snap. You would need, like, EMP Tornado straight away, because low level of time lapse actually costs, like, a lot of mana, 150. Uh, the higher ranks cost, actually, I think, 75 and then zero. But the very first one is very difficult. So yeah. if you landed Tornado EMP, maybe they could have killed him. But I'm, he didn't surprised, even... I'm surprised they tossed it towards, uh, towards S4. Normally, uh, get, get him away so I can survive. But, uh, yeah. I guess there's always a chance that he doesn't have mana or screws up somehow. Nah, they knew he had mana. He's been bottle crowing pretty much the whole game. Top lane, Nightmare and Arrow on Ake. Looks like a pretty much a free kill. So I'm just going to be there. Loda going in. Maybe a bit questionable life Soaking drain from off. long distance. Unicorn. Casually ride his kitty away back to the safety of his tower. Oh, it looks like S4 is going to find Mini in the river. Tornado is going to follow up the cold snap. Soul Assumption goes off, but EGM is actually the one who gets the kill on Mini and now exists. Is going to be forced back to his side of the river as well. And going to see an arrow off the mark. So with the Nightmare Arrow combo, I think Chen could have actually survived that. It was moving his Satyr to block the arrow. I, I thought that's what yeah. he was doing, but it was, seems like it was a little slow. So unfortunate, but it happens. And now with, with this 1v1, I think as there's more level being gotten here by uh, both the Ace as well as uh, Admiral Bulldog, Admiral Bulldog should win this eventually, Radiant's right? Just brute hits attack. nonstop. And He's doing so well considering he has no sentry wards at all. Yeah, like he has the highest last hits in the game. It's very impressive. Like. Being ganked, you know, by yeah. uh, by the Bane earlier Dyer's and being dove upon. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised myself. That actually, the Lone Druid does edge out Weaver, but Ace has supplemented his laning by just consistently having mana to Shikuchi, because that's what you need. Yep. So in a way, it's like MYM knew how to deal with this, and again, the no sentries thing is definitely a huge deal. Yeah, and here comes a Bane. Unfortunately, he's only level 5, so he really needs to stay here until he gets that level 6, and hope that there's no root. And, and He'll he, get it on this wave. Yeah, if you look at Admiral Bulldog, he's got 1300 HP with 14 armor. I just don't think they're actually going to get that kill. Oh, they can. If, if they get the damage, All right, out, here they we go. Can. Here comes the grip. But here comes the rewatch. Oh, the weavers. It's going to happen. The weaver is nowhere near even close, but he's going to come in. There's a nightmare, but a single TP, oh. and that's why this is not going to work. Crit is going to get close snap off a great TP from S4. Tornado is going to come in. Fair is kill. it going to get the kill? Yes, it will. And that's going to be it. Like a man. The ace back up. I'm I so think, confused. Yeah, I think Ace was low and he was bottling or something like that, but he was really, really far away. The Visage got the kill on the bear as well. I bet he's chuffed with that.
two sets of wards, lads. That was really awkward because if they actually coordinated that better, they could have done way more damage to Bulldog, and I think the soul assumption from many actually could have just killed him. But Ace just walked back to the tower when the creep wave was dying, so a bit of miscommunication for sure. But now, Alliance here in full force, bottom lane. Looks like they want to fight as well. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they got the war down. It's going to be very, very difficult for MY to defend. Oh, nice try here. Cold snap. Tornado's going to miss here from S4. And that is going to be a retreat. I, it will surprise me greatly if MY wants to fight this. Do you keep I don't going? Think they can. If you're alliance? Looks like they have middle in the meantime. Exist manages to find himself a solo kill on Ake. And I think he got that blink, actually. Yes. Like, not too long ago. Yeah, he so. just got it. That's like the one gimme kill that you always get in games where it's like, oh, didn't know he had a blink. I died. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, lads. He didn't know. Yeah, for those of you guys that are wondering why was Chen in the mid lane in the first place, well, S4 rotated off, so if you give Puck an easy mid-tower kill like that, it's probably even worse than a Chen kill, so Chen had to place his butt there, protect the mid-tower, and, you know, he dies as a result, but I think it's more important that they protect that tier 1 tower, and speaking of tier 1 tower, I think Loda's coming up the hill and starting to a little bit of blaster action. Tier 1. It's so hard to stop Alliance's push, too. Like, even with the kind of initiation that MYM have with now having a Blink Puck, he pretty much has to hit the Chen with a Silence every single time. And if they lose a couple more Tier 1s, then Ake is going to be very close to Mech, and then they could be saying things like this, which is just go for a Roshan when your bear is at 20% HP, because why the hell not? I mean, you have Chen creeps. And the Buckler. The Auras, the Buckler. But MYM, Shen. no. They have a ward. Actually, does Did that word see? No, I don't think that. No, no now they, they know. Yeah, now, now they, they know. know. Yeah. The jigs up, boys. They don't even care. The thing is, you can't stop they, it. They, yeah, they can't really do that much. But looks like Alliance is still scared enough to maybe not just do this at all. I think they're giving respect to Puck. I mean, especially knowing the fact that he has Blink Dagger. Yeah. You, you don't want to get a four-man coil, and who knows Dyer's what's behind there. I uh, guess Swarm could really make you, uh, you know, rethink your choices. And it's good that MYM was able to stop that Roshan without rotating Unicorn and Bane, who is setting up a surprise gank on the top lane. But seems like nobody's fall falling for that trick just yet like the fact that MYM has decided to just put people in all lanes instead of trying to contest the Roshan, because if this fight goes badly for MYM and Alliance get the Aegis, suddenly the momentum is just so far out of their favor, there wouldn't be much they can do. But at the very least, they're getting farm, they're pressuring lanes, they're sticking to what I would call a standard style of play instead of putting themselves in a position where it could potentially just go horribly. Oh, well, it's Puck going for the steal right now. Orb is going to see it. It's very, very low. It's coming oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's way too aggressive. Invoker picks up the Aegis. What a mod. And uh, exists. That is not going to earn me any fantasy point, but good try, good try. I feel like that should actually take away points when you do stuff <laughs> like that. That should give him 20 points. There should just the be steel. a special category, Roshan yeah, yeah, Seals, yeah. failed attempt is like minus 10 points. I, I think that's why Bambo got negative at TI2. That's like, probably why. Yeah, But they are going to get a little bit of tier 1 out of that, so maybe. Uh, tier 1 damage at least on the top lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Did Roshan is worth two tier 1 towers? Do I, at this point in the game, I don't think it is actually for yeah. Alliance because their their whole thing is making sure that they keep the most amount of map control but whilst they, being able to take one, away tier 1. That's getting tier 1, so if you yeah. look at the mid lane, oh, oh Loda drops low, but he's okay. He's got the magic stick as well. Nice deny here coming out from crit. Wily was entangled. He, yeah, he even got entangled yeah, when yeah. that happened. Ooh. And, and the double. Secure UGM load up. by UGM, he had Starfall, yeah, right into an arrow. Yeah. That's still worth it, though. That's a worth, hashtag yeah. worth right there. He just killed two supports and got all the experience for it. Now he's halfway to level 11, so he had max rank of Starstorm, and he had Fable. He just walked Radiant's in, used them both, and just got two kills, so nice. power to him. Yeah, I, I think Exist has to really uh, pick it up. Not not to say he's been playing poorly, regardless of how that Age of Steel went. I think the team is really relying on him a lot to put that mid game away. Because we know once this game goes past 35 minutes, there's no way there's enough damage for MYM to actually take out uh, Lone Druid Bear. With that said, though, there is the Weaver who is you know farming. You get decently. a medallion on the Visage as well. It could be. Yeah, strong. yeah, it's definitely doable. Marana with drums and phase. So there there is some decent source of damage. And Hammer Bulldog goes straight for Maelstrom instead of something like a Midas. What's your thought on that? I think that Maelstrom is always a good choice when you know that you're going to consistently be pushing and fighting. Mm -hmm. Because Radiance is one of those things where once you get it, sure, it's pretty nice, but I don't think the Radiance Burn is something that MYM is going to be too concerned about. In Drawn Out Fights, they have three heroes that are extremely mobile, so sure. I don't think that Radiance Burn is as good against compositions that can just straight up run away from you in those circumstances. So only Visage and Bane would really be subject to that kind of a problem. And if he wants to, he can just go for stacking orbs and just get attack speed, maybe go AC or Desso or something like that a little bit later. And then on top of Alacrity, once 
four starts getting his levels, I think it actually scales better than just having a Radiance. Yeah, ra the, the cool thing about Radiance is that if you Dyer's force MYM to take those attack. fights, they, they are going to take a lot of damage because how squishy they are, but they just don't really have good ways to force them to take fight. I guess if you hit a, you know, a very, very good uh, ice wall, then that's the case, but yeah, you can't really rely on that. Do you think the Maelstrom's for farming on Lone Druid, yeah? Do you think that's what it's like? I mean, well, it's Radiance for wave farms. pushing and farming. I think Radiance doesn't give you more farm, though. Well, the... Radiance definitely gives you more farm, but we also have to consider that a Radiance is what, another 25, yeah, 2400 yeah, gold? Yeah. Something like that. It's a big chunk item, like you don't get yeah. the little parts. And you still kind of get the same effect from a Maelstrom in terms of if you get a Maelstrom proc every 20%, it still pushes the wave pretty darn fast. And S4 going for a Tornado, EMP on top of Unicorn. The Cold Snap was there, but he was able to leap away before the EMP really dealt any damage. But kill on middle, each EM just soloed exists. That's my boy. I don't even understand how. That's, you know what, Radiant I'm going to say that's the play to the phase boots puck because you just don't have any health when yeah, you have phase boots. So when you do get caught, Radiant's you go splat. I think what happened there was he stole waning rift. It was like telekinesis Dyer's lift into his own waning rift and then it was just a couple more fable right clicks. That got to be it. No, I agree. Yeah. It's it's one thing that if you're not used to playing against the Rubik as Puck, uh -oh. you're just going to have to learn. Crit walking oh, straight wow. into S4's uh, Cold Snap, and he's going to try to Nightmare himself, but he's dead to the Gen Creep here. The heal is going to keep everybody alive. S4 fighting under tower, and the Soul Assumption kills himself off the Pugna Wards. Meanwhile, Ace on the back line trying to do a lot of right click here against Ake. Tornado's going to pick him up. The Coil's going to hit on two, and Chen is still alive, not for long. Ace drops, and uh, we're going to have Chase coming out here from the Birds, but the Centaur Creeps or sorry, the chain creep's still on the front line. When the dust settles, it's a four for two trade in favor of Alliance. They were actually fairly lucky that Exist respawned when he did, because if he didn't, it would have gone even worse, and I don't think they would have even been able to kill Ake or Loda Radiant's at that point, because his supplemental top. damage from Orb was what allowed them to kill Loda in the first place. Mm -hmm. And S4 just threw his Aegis, he's like, yeah, I can't really do much, so. Okay, so it's more of a four for three, but yeah. So he hasn't learned to exhort at all. In yeah, Vulcan. he skipped it entirely. Yeah, same thing like Dendi yesterday. We were kind of uh, questioning about that. Well, I think a lot of it is when you only have two points into Invoke. Yeah, you don't have the Invokes. Yeah, yeah you, you don't have the cooldowns to really use those spells in those situations and exist. Seems like he might be in a little bit of trouble, but he managed to blink that tornado very nicely, but still have vision. Waning There's rip. the waiting They're just standing there, okay, man. I know you're here. here. Knock, knock. He's orbing out. He's, he's got a TP, so he's fine. Yeah. I, I actually think the one point into Exhort is fully worth it this game, simply for alacrity. Yeah. You put it on the bear. It's just, it's crazy damage output, but obviously uh, maybe the more crowd control spells like EMP Tornado uh, are a little bit more important. In a position to push, like with the bear, you have him up on the front line. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. then, okay, you can alacrity him, but then you have a cooldown on Invoke, like you have one spell less. Sure. No, I think it's still worth, but uh, that's just me. Circumstantial. Yeah. We'll say that. This is the stage where Alliance's lineup has pretty much reached, I wouldn't say its best capability, but it's definitely at the stage where they know that they can just run into towers as five. Yep. And here comes another Tornado EMP, it's going to hit on two, Mini and Crit. Unfortunately for uh, for Mini, he's going to be the one who takes the bad part of that. Crit's going to sit back here, maybe go for it, then I actually decides not to, and I can't say that I blame him, yep. given how fast that tower died. This is Alliance to a T. Like, it really is. As soon as they realize they had any advantage, they just go completely ham. I mean, this is what we talked about earlier. They have a greedy giraffe, and now they're threatening to get a Rax 19, 20 minutes in the game. MYM's gonna have one good fight left in them, because they still have the Dream Coil available. If there's a bad clump from Alliance, it could happen, but there's a lot of healing from Alliance as well. Chen as well as uh, that mech available. Here we go, Mini dropping a couple of stuns. That ward on the front line, this is something that we haven't talked about too much, with everybody so squishy. Oh, Blink initiation coming out from EGM, Leap out being forced from Unicorn, and uh, Armor Bulldog Bear going to work. Oh, what a coil! After the fact, blinks back into his team. Ace, Ace actually pops the DKB, forced the time lapse. Soul Assumption on EGM doing quite a bit of damage. And Tangle on the crit. Goodbye, Mr. Bane. You are not going to be able to live through that one. He does get the nightmare off on the bear. Is this going to be forced to phase shift and blink back once again? I I think that's just Rax. Like, yeah. what do they really do? They don't do enough damage, which is weird because on top of having like pure damage from Brain Sap, Visage Birds, Soul Assumption, Star Storm Arrows, and a Puck, their burst is actually pretty substantial. 
potential, but they just can't seem to get everything together to take somebody out. They got Loda. You kind of need physical damage as well Dyer's to kill the bear, don't you? Well, yeah. Unfortunately, one side has a mech, and uh, the other side only has a buckler. Meanwhile, Ace is going to work, but he gets picked up by EMP Tornado. He does not have magic wand, so he's out of mana. There's no more chasing. <laughs> Yeah, I actually think, sure, there's a lot of burst damage, and as you see Unicorn trying to do oh, some what a telekinesis. Tactics, yeah, he gets picked off as well. Alliance just outlasts them with the mech and uh, just the raw tankiness of things like life drain and, and the bear and all that stuff. There's, there's nothing like it on MYM. Also, I think that Pugna War is doing a significant amount of damage on, on these squishies. Soul Assumption costs so much mana that Visit just kills himself under that. And of course, we talked about Puck having only what's. 1,000 HP now thanks to the ultimate orb. He kills himself Radiant's after casting three spells. So they're, they're just, they, they can out tank alliance. No, I definitely agree. I think there's another point Radiant's that's important to kind of hit on here is Alliance had a draft that was greedy in the right way. And what I mean by that is they're kind of gold greedy. Only one of their, or two of their heroes really need levels that much, and that's Loda and S4. We're going to see another kill on many here, but I'm pretty much just assuming the GG is going to be called soon. Ace pops his BKB, Exist goes in with a waning rift, going to get immediately lifted, and Ace is forced to time lapse back inside of his base. Coil's going to land on three, but it's more or less a retreat coil. EGM actually coils. stole it. Admiral Bulldog in the meantime manages to secure crit. Unicorn going in to drop off Star Not Storm, gets entangled, forced to leap, and crit calls the GG. So, like I was saying, pretty, pretty, uh, it was looking okay, honestly, for a yeah. while, but then you came to this realization that even if Lone Druid is considered a relatively greedy hero because he needs a couple items, he can still help the team kill towers. Ace was forced into going BKB first as a Weaver. Yep. That pretty much guarantees that for the next 10 to 15 minutes, you're not going to have any damage whatsoever or impact on the game unless you're given time. So I think that the Weaver, like I even mentioned during the draft,